All right, we're good to go. Thank you, Liana. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order uh, the February 15th, 2022 meeting of the City of South Pasadena Mobility and Transportation Infrastructure Commission. Uh, this meeting is held exclusively virtually via Zoom. Uh, and there is an opportunity for uh, public comment. Uh, if you do have a comment, please uh, raise your hand using the Zoom icon and uh, your microphone will be unmuted and you'll have an opportunity to speak for up to uh, three minutes. Okay, well, with that, uh, why don't we start with the roll? Chair Abelson? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Commissioner Hughes? Here. Commissioner Dunlap? Here. Uh, Council Member John Primus? Here. Excellent. Hey, thank Liana. And I'll, I'll note that um, Public Works Director Ted Gerber is here as well as uh, Public Works Assistant Liana DeWitt. Um, next up, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Commissioner Dunlap, would you do us the honor of leading us? Sure thing. Please stand if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America, and, America and to the republic, to the republic for, for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, under God, God under God, and visible, visible, and with liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Dunlap. Uh, first on the agenda is uh, public comments. Liana, do we have anyone who wishes to provide public comment on an item not on the agenda? No, we do not. Okay, so I will open and close public comment. That concludes item one on our agenda, moving right along to Item two, we have uh, the minutes of our last regular meeting, which was on January 18th, 2022. Does uh, anyone have any comments, corrections, additions, deletions they wish to suggest? As usual, both Commissioner Hughes and I have already reviewed and, and uh, Liana has incorporated our comments. Commissioner uh, Dunlap has his hand raised. Oh, thank you. Commissioner Dunlap. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The only thing I noticed was the meeting format up at the top. I believe it says that the meeting was held in a hybrid manner, both in person and via Zoom. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, I think we were fully in person, fully virtual. Yes. Good catch. So just, just remove the comma and both in person. Does that both in person and so it just reads hybrid manner via Zoom? Is that okay? I think it would just be in a virtual manner via Zoom. It, oh, it I'm sorry, hybrid, hybrid doesn't work. <laughs> 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 All right, so the meeting was held in a virtual manner via Zoom. That's how it would read? Okay. All right, anyone else? Or anything else from anyone? Okay. All right, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve as modified. I would so move that we um, approve the minutes as amended. Second. Okay, Commissioner Hughes moves and uh, Vice Chair Fisher seconds. Um, it's virtual, Liana, how should we do this? Uh, you can raise your hands, all in favor. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Is that everyone? Passes, yes, passes unanimously. Okay, great. Okay, thank you all. All right, moving uh, on to our next action item is our annual report. 
And I want to thank, um, uh, I want, of course, if staff has anything to, to add, please. I just wanted to thank John, uh, Commissioner, sorry, Vice Chair Fisher for putting the draft together. And then uh, uh, Commissioner Hughes and I made some, uh, made some adjustments. Um, does anyone have anything they'd like to say about, say about it, change, comment on? Commissioner Hughes's hand is raised. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just had a quick question more for Ted. Uh, what is gonna be the process for presenting this? And do we have um, uh, a time frame? And the question also is, if we present this, will the uh, city council get it ahead of time? They'll have it or will they see it just that night as part of their packet? And the other question would be, if we want to also maybe create a PowerPoint could go, to go with this, if there was part of what we could present, because we might want to show some of those concepts that we looked at regarding the slow streets, what we've done about the furniture, the, uh, you know, some of the equipment, so they can see some visuals. And so the public can see some of those visuals, because I'm not sure how much of that has really been shared. And also what we've done um, with some of the improvements already on some of the locations and so they see some tangibles. Uh, great question and also very timely question. Um, we don't uh, fully know how this is going to work out in the next couple of months. Um, it's, some of the, uh, act, it's some of the items to be discussed uh, next week during the special uh, council meeting on February 23rd to discuss um, commissions and, and their efficiency. I'll tell you that one idea that has been floated is holding a commissioner Congress uh, closer to the end of the fiscal year to review the 2021 um, annual plans and, and perhaps a brief presentation. Um, as far as council uh, members um, and their review of the information, um, we've been sending the agenda packets out to the council um, for the most part, about a week ahead of the council um, meeting. So the first time that they are, they are seeing it is not that night. Um, and then uh, fielding questions as they come in. And then of course, fielding questions that night. So, so I, I don't have a, a solid answer for you. I know that there will be an opportunity. It's just a matter of whether it will be at a council meeting or a special, special meeting Congress that they described. Um, and then yes, there will be an opportunity for the council members to see. Okay, do we have an idea, at least if we could get maybe a little bit of notice so we could prepare something? Um, I'm not sure where that's I, I would, from. Yeah, I was gonna ask if everybody could put their uh, selves on mute unless they're speaking, that would be great. Um, I'm sorry, um, I don't know where that's coming from, but anyway, so do we, if we could get a little bit of notice so we might be able to, if, if allowed, to maybe prepare a few slides in a PowerPoint or something that we could show to accompany the annual report. So the public would also get some visuals about some of the accomplishments and, and what, you know, all of the slow streets, what might be coming. Most definitely, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll also share that I think that this commission is really ahead of the game, having already drafted some work plan items and having a complete annual report that you may be actually adopting tonight. Um, so other commissions are still trying to figure out how that process is going to work. So um, it may be a, a little while I, everybody catches up, but I'll certainly give you that information ahead of time so you can have the time to prepare. Oh, thank you very much, Ted. Thank you both. Uh, anyone else oh. have anything they'd like to discuss? Oh. One last Hughes. comment. I just wanted to really also echo your comments and thank uh, Commissioner Vice Chair Fisher for putting so much thought and effort into it. And um, it really is gratifying to kind of see things that are have come together that everyone's worked on uh, collectively and look at some of the future things that are coming for the city, which are really exciting when you think about what we're doing for Fair Oaks and what the slow streets uh, financing will do for parts of the city going forward. And 
what's being tackled and even looking at you know the holy family traffic situations ramona all those different things that have been uh part of this body's agendas the last year i mean it's it there's a lot that's been done and really thank you uh vice chair fisher for kind of capsulizing it all for us Thank you. And just, just to um, make sure I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, to pile on, you know, when we started this report, I was thinking that, oh, you know, have we really, did we really accomplish that much last, last year? Because at times it felt like we hadn't. Uh, but after looking at this and working on it, I felt much better about all that we had done last year and the stage that we set for this year. And um, I'm optimistic that we're going to be able to make some material progress on some of these things um, and things that, that residents will actually be able to, you know, touch and feel instead of it all just being sort of conceptual. So, so I, was, I was sort of excited to, to see this come together. Um, so if, so all I'm seeing on the screen is the report and, and Commissioner Hughes, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just wanted to make sure I'm not ignoring anybody who wants to speak, but um, my thought is if, if, if no one else has any thoughts or comments, then, then we can proceed to adopt it. But I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance. Mr. Chairman, I move a, approval of the um, annual report to present to council. Right. Oh, I would second, second that motion. Oh. Okay, uh, so we have a Motion by Vice Chair Fisher, a second by Commissioner Hughes. Uh, if everyone in favor would please raise their hand. I'll just say aye as well. Aye. Thank you. Do you see four, Liana? I do, yes, thank you. Okay, and, and by the way, I, I should have noted at the top that we unfortunately lost uh, Commissioner Liu uh, between last month and this month, and I don't mean lost, lost, but um, uh, um, unfortunately, he um, is stepping down because he's moving um, out of the area, which with and it's exciting for him, but it's a loss for us. And, and um, we're sorry to see him go, but are very appreciative of everything that he's done for us and hopefully will continue to do in some way. Um, okay, great. All right. So we've uh, moved through our two action items, going to uh, item four under discussion items, which is the review of the commission's ad hoc committees. Uh, Ted, would you like to lead us off? Sure. Um, so as you all know, the commission has four ad hoc committees, um, the Ramona committee, uh, COVID, the 710 um, committee, and then the preferential parking committee. And so there was a thought that uh, given the number of projects that this commission is undertaking, um, does the commission still want to highlight those particular committees um, for, uh, to, to continue um, action under those sub, subgroups? Um, and how do we wanna go about doing that? In other words, uh, do we want those committees to continue or do, um, the committee, the commission's actions just fold into our regular work and as part of our uh, upcoming work plan. Um, there's a couple options you could weigh here. Uh, we didn't show the uh, committees on the agenda tonight because we weren't planning on reporting anything specific or actually the commission didn't have anything uh, specific to report on those four areas. We will certainly give you some um, updates on the different projects during our um, commissioner communications and our staff liaison communications. So we could keep those committees open and then access them when we need them, or uh, they could be closed out. Um, and then if, if a need arises for a, a new ad hoc committee, um, we could certainly address that at that time. So it's just a discussion item to see how the commission feels about um, having those four committees still active or if it's felt that in largely they've done what they were asked to do initially and now the project work continues um, moving forward uh, routinely. Hopefully I explained that uh, well enough for you to um, consider. Perfect. Thank you, Ted. 
Um, does would anybody like to start a, the conversation off? Uh, Vice Chair Fisher. Yes, um, I believe it was the uh, the chair who created these subcommittees for the purpose of. Uh, looking intently at um, areas that we could make a recommendation to the public works department on preferential parking on uh, the issues regarding the Ramona Avenue neighborhood and the high schools nearby uh, and on the slow streets. Um, I believe that uh, we've uh, looked intently at it. We've made a recommendation uh, the recommendation has gone to the Public Works Department, and I believe then that any further work would not require um, a um, ad hoc, I'm sorry, a, uh, a subcommittee, but rather would it would be sufficient to have the full commission uh, take further action on those. So I believe that the preferential parking subcommittee, the Ramona subcommittee and the Slow Street subcommittee have completed their work. And I do not see personally a need to continue those subcommittees. We could continue discussion of those issues, but that would be before the full commission. I do believe, however, that the 710 subcommittee uh, should continue to operate as a subcommittee uh, as we look at the options for the loop on ramp and uh, until such time that uh, we can uh, complete our review of the loop on ramp. Uh, so I, I recommend that the 710 committee be continued rather as a subcommittee and that the other subcommittees um, would, uh, would conclude their work. That would be my opinion on the matter. Okay, thank you. Commissioner uh, Hughes, his uh, hand is raised. Commissioner Hughes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, I concur with a lot of what Commissioner Vice Chair Fisher was commenting, but I would also like uh, Commissioner Dunlap to maybe also chime in because he was so instrumental on helping with the preferential parking. And um, I do also think that we should maintain the 710 and maybe we come up with a different name because um, even though the 710 is not happening, I think for a subcommittee to continue because of the breadth of what's coming with the loop ramp, as well as I think, which we, I think uh, was alluded to at the last meeting that uh, Director Gerber talked about regarding you know, the future of the stubs and the impacts of those for the, the city and making sure that all of those elements are considered together as part of the corridor transportation vision for the future so that we continue that and uh, keep a pulse, you know, keep tabs of the pulse of what's going on with those various elements. But I would help from uh, Commissioner Dunlap, whether he thinks we should keep the preferential parking if there's changes there, if he thinks that should go forth or if we should maybe give it a hiatus um, since he and uh, former Commissioner Lou did so much work on that extensively. And it's, it's something that could impact, obviously, for the future. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dunlap. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as Yeah, you're right. It's 50% of those committees, the Preferential Parking District Subcommittee and the Soul Street Subcommittee, um, particularly like Preferential Parking, I feel like, it's wise to phase that um, committee out. I feel like we've fulf we fulfilled, um, we were successful in kind of feel like fulfilling our mission and kind of delivering um, best practices with preferential parking. I think a lot of the discussion that we had um, was really helpful um, and it's it's a preferential parking di district. I think what we got at is, is a large undertaking and it, it seems like um, even that would be um, maybe best folded into some larger plan, some larger like parking plan or curb management plan for the city that's um, been thrown around. So 
until um, we reach that day, I think it does make sense to um, phase that one out. Um, regarding the, um, the, the slow streets, um, I think we are the COVID-19, I forget the exact name of it. Um, I think we're kind of in this phase where we're still in the pandemic, but we feel like we should be past it. And um, everyone's um, um, ready to be kind of done with it all. Um, so there's, there's some, I think there's some work to be left in it, but since half of that committee's gone, it might, um, it might be, be, it might be best just to um, kind of phase that one out. And then once um, we have a new, either a new commissioner or a, um, you know, whatever the, the future of this commission looks like on uh, looking, revisiting that, that um, strategic plan that we talked about last month and trying to align our, our ad hoc committees and subcommittees with that. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be supportive of particularly those two, um, phasing those out at this time. Right, thank you. Um, Commissioner Hughes. Um, with that in mind, perhaps um, Commissioner Dunlap, do you get, believe that might be a value to keep sort of the COVID slash slow street slash um, configuration, if you will, as an agenda, as an ongoing agenda item? That way the commission can talk about, because. I know there's deliverables we're still waiting for from the funds and implementation and such so that we might want to keep that as at least in a, an ongoing agenda item would would that you think have value i i think that does have value and kind of going back to um commissioner fisher's um, point at our last meeting if unless yeah. things are continually agendized um we kind of lose track of them and so that one in particular if we don't have a subcommittee it would be cool or i think beneficial to have that agendized each month so we can um you know keep track and and the implementation of that isn't lost thank you commissioner Hughes, your hand is up but you that's you've we've covered what you wanted to talk about yeah commissioner Hughes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we lost her. So um, I, I'm in agreement with pretty much everything that's been said. I, just as a quick background, what prompted this uh, is, you know, originally we had all four committees on every agenda and that was at my suggestion to make sure, um, as was just discussed, these topics don't get lost. Um, but then what was happening was we'd have um, meeting after meeting where, for example, you know, parking has done its work and we'd have no update because uh, it's done its work and it's, it's sort of in staff's hands and, and in terms of next steps. So it didn't make sense to, it, it was like we, we got to the point where we didn't need to have all four of these committees, every agenda. And then we started thinking a little more about, okay, well, do we need the committees? Um, so um, from what I'm hearing, um, it sounds like, uh, and I'm just looking at our minutes of our last meeting just so I get the names right. Um, the Preferential Parking Policy Ad Hoc Committee and the Ramona Avenue Neighborhood Traffic Management Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, it sounds like there's consensus that those can be, at this point, those can be dissolved and, and we don't need to continue with those committees. That doesn't mean the work isn't still there and that, that either staff and the commission will still deal with these issues. It's just the committee piece of it has been um, completed. Does that sound right? Everybody nod your head or, okay. And then with regard to the last two, so SR 710 mobility improvement projects, um, I think there's consensus that uh, you know that's it's in its infancy. And so there is quite a bit more to do. So it probably makes sense to keep that um, I mean, uh, to Commissioner Hughes' point, we can talk about relabeling it um, if that's something that everybody wants to do. Um, uh, you know, we can call it Measure R if we want. I don't know if there's another name for it, but it all relates to um, uh, the projects that are being funded as a result of the fact that the SR710 is not being completed. So, um, but so unless people are it's important to people to change the name. 
um, we can leave it as is. If somebody has a recommendation, let me let us know. Otherwise, it sounds like we'd like to continue with that. Um, is there also consensus though that we don't need to have it on every agenda unless there's something specific to report on or discuss? Is that is that agreeable? Or would you like to see it on every agenda no matter what? I'll, I'll entertain I, any. I think it's I think it doesn't hurt to have it on the agenda. And if there's no update, there's no update. Okay. I would uh, concur because I think it gives us it keeps it it keeps us a front mind awareness so we don't forget. You know, things don't get forgotten and lost. Okay. Um, and uh, Vice Chair Fisher shaking his head. So as it sounds like we're, we're good with that. Uh, so we'll keep it on each agenda. And then the other committee that it sounds like there's some desire to retain is the uh, COVID-19 ad hoc, um, uh, which is fine with me. And, and uh, do you all want to take the same approach with that? And, and have that on every agenda as well. And if there's no update, there's no update. Okay. Oh, uh, Commissioner Dunlap. Yeah, I do have a thought about the, the COVID-19 ad hoc. Um, initially that started out outdoor dining and we can't go in restaurants, we can't go in stores. So we need to do that outside. And that was the COVID-19 response. Um, we're kind of past that, I guess. We've been out of that for about a year and a half now. And it, it kind of evolved into slow streets, which is like neighborhood traffic calming, basically, which is very like neighborhood traffic management program. Um, so um, as far as like COVID-19, I think we've kind of responded to that. Um, it, 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 I guess we, we can keep it. Another thought is to phase it out and then whatever direction um i know director gerber mentioned wanting to discuss the neighborhood traffic management program and figure out a way to sustainably implement that um, some slow street slash ntmp program around or some committee around that um i don't know i'm just kind of thinking about the future of it it started with outdoor dining covid 19 response but now it's basically slow streets and neighborhood traffic calming right those are good points. Um, Vice Chair Fisher. Yes, I, I have no problem with um, having the item as uh, having slow streets be on our agenda for a while until things are implemented. So it's kind of evolving. We're waiting for the implementation, but I'm not sure there's a need to retain the subcommittee. Um, subcommittee did its work and I think any further update can come to the full council I'm not or full, full commission I'm not sure there's any need for a, a, a subcommittee to look into the outdoor dining or the slow streets I just think that the full uh, commission could uh, deal with with the item okay so um, and I, I think both of you made some great points. So marrying the two, uh, how about adding the COVID-19 ad hoc to the list of, of committees that we're dissolving? And then when we decide what the needs are going forward, whether it's in the you know, slow streets, neighborhood traffic management or whatever it is, um, if there's a need to, re, to, to constitute or make up a new committee, um, with uh, whoever the commissioner is, whichever commissioners are interested at the time, we can do that. Um, we're, we're missing half the existing committee now anyway. Um, so if it's, if it's okay with anyway, everyone, it sounds like what we're talking about is um, retaining the SR710 mobility ad hoc and um, uh, at this point, dissolving the other three and then uh, revisiting the slow streets neighborhood traffic management need um, in the future when it arises. Is that, is that okay? And I think Commissioner Hughes has her hand up as well. Um, I would just say that I'm agreeing with what you're saying. I'm just thinking that we make sure for the future agendas that both of those items, the 710 projects uh, in its totality, 
whatever components or as an agenda item. And then the slow street slash COVID slash outdoor slash neighborhood, that's the ongoing agenda item so that we have that awareness. Even if there's nothing to report at a particular meeting, we know that until everything gets done and implemented, it's an, it's an ongoing important priority. So I'm a hundred percent agree with you. I, to me, it's, 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 it's top of the list. Um, um, what do you think about uh, having an understanding with staff that that is an, uh, that is a project that is an item that they will report on every month as part of their um, status report slash update? Or do you want to see it as an actual discussion item? Well, I'm just thinking if we just leave it as a discussion, as we've done in previous meetings, if there's nothing... It's just you just you know you're done it's over but at least it's listed there so that it, it creates the awareness and the reminder of where we are with this so it doesn't get forgotten that would be my thought but i would i would also ask my other fellow commissioners their thoughts and certainly ted yours so just and before before you all chime in so so what it would be is going forward the agenda would continue to have the commission-led discussion section um, which we don't have this month, but going forward, we would, and it would have the SR710 ad hoc, and then would have Slow Streets program, something like that. That's what you're suggesting, right? Yes. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Ted, and anybody else. Um, all I'll add is from a SAS perspective, um, these ad hoc committees are very much project focused in that they have a start um, work completed and then end. And from what I'm hearing, um, and uh, given what staff has worked on, these are the ones you're talking about are ongoing projects. There is work yet to do. So it makes sense uh, to retain them at the level you're talking about. And of course, uh, we'll try to provide updates on all ongoing projects, um, and tech projects. And then certainly if we miss anything, please just bring it to our attention. Um, but we'll also attempt to um, capture everything on our work plans also that we've been discussing. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. So do we, are we all, we have a consensus? Um, dissolve the three ad hocs, retain SR 710 and agendize going forward the SR 710 committee and the Slow Streets program as a commission led discussion. Yes, yes, good. Okay, great. Okay, thank you all. Um, does that work for you, Ted, in terms of direction? And okay. All right, well, here we are at the final section of our agenda. Um, item five, City Council Liaison Communications. Council Member Premeth. Hi, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> we have our City Council meeting tomorrow. We have um, a number of items. We have a, a financial mid-year budget update, which I think will be um, exciting in the sense that it's not something we've usually been able to have an accurate mid-year update. So we're going to get the results of some of the improvements that have been made in the budgeting financial reporting processes that uh, the city and the city manager's office have installed in the last year. Uh, we also have a discussion item on a, a uh, public art is there a is city council's direction to staff on developing a public art policy. Uh, there's also um, a uh, decision by the council, potential decision by the council to change the default setting for commercial users of electricity to the 100% green setting, which is a default that can be opted out of. But um, uh, on the residential side, the default setting is 100% uh, renewable and 95% of the residents have continued that and they have not opted out. So we're um, thinking that might be the similar trend on the commercial side. Uh, we'll hear a, a mid-year uh, report from the police and fire departments on their uh, various accomplishments, challenges, um, and all kinds of things, their programs ahead. Uh, and a number of other things that I can't recall right now, but um, it's a packed agenda. We are 100% uh, virtual and uh, we are limiting the general public comment to a half hour at the beginning of the meeting 
with any overflow comments that'll be at the end of the meeting. If there's an agenda specific comment that will be on the agenda, of course, but general comments are gonna be limited at the outset to half hour because of uh, we just need to sequence our, this, our process a little bit more uh, so that we don't go so late in the evening for some of these important items. That's all I have, thanks. <clears throat> hey, thank you very much. Um, I, I just have one question. Um, Ted mentioned that you're the council having a special meeting. Is it a week from tomorrow? And is it is that right? And is it just on the sort of the the concept of commissions and the the future of commissions? Right. It's it's uh, the city manager and staff initiating discussion among council on uh, you know commissions, potential consolidation, um, how work should be assigned. Uh, we, we have heard over the, a number of meetings, particularly when we were discussing the animal commission, the, uh, the burden on staff. And so our city manager, um, you know, is going to present her review after taking a look after the last six or seven months on the job and then asking the city council to provide direction. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any other questions for council member Primus? Okay, I see none. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, moving along to uh, commissioner communications. Does anyone have anything they'd like to bring up? Uh, commissioner Hughes and then uh, vice chair Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just first, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Director Gerber for the work that was done through West Coast Arborist on the city signage and the landscaping that's been done. Yay, it looks great. I know there's more work to do, but it's it's really nice to come around that bend I do every day and you know kind of see that welcome for, for the city. I mean, it's a nice way to have our city kind of uh, be showcased there. It's been, you know, it's kind of been hidden there for a while. I also wanted to ask, um, at our last meeting, there was a number of public comments regarded to, regarding the situation at Milan and Monterey. And there was comments about uh, actual um, physical accidents with injuries and such. And I went back and was trying to look through all the police report blotters and the various newspapers and what I could find. But could we get um, maybe some information in a future meeting about really what is the, the statistics and information regarding that particular location? We heard from a number of our residents. There was also some, we heard the ones uh, that came to the meeting uh, via Zoom, but there was also comments that were put into the record that uh, referenced that particular location and the concerns that the, the public had, these public uh, citizens and residents had. It would be nice to see if we can get some more statistics from the police department or where we can get that data to see that, you know, what the situation is with that location. So it might be looked at for a future agenda for consideration. Or if you if your team has already given some thought to that particular location. The other is I know we had talked about in the last meeting, too, is looking at a list of the projects that will be coming up for development so we can look at the traffic patterns related to those projects. And last, I think we also talked about a list of those outstanding items that are still out there in the ether that we know we wanted to tackle, but they've kind of fallen off the radar. We know we've got the, the uh, Metro line improvements that Commissioner uh, Chair Fisher has um, been championed for a long time to make sure where we are with those. So we kind of get a list again of those things that are out there, including uh, where we are with some of the deliverables for the slow streets. When are those coming? So we can kind of keep our, our eye out for them and keep tabs of, of those uh, particular items, projects and investments. So I just wanted to bring those forth as uh, for consideration, if we can kind of think about those going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Um, Vice Chair Fisher. Yes, um, Commissioner Hughes kind of uh, talked about what I was going to mention. I was pleased to see that the uh, city sign was 
more visible from the freeway. The foliage has been cleared. Uh, the one thing I did notice is that the rock letters to me were not completely visible because I believe the tall grass around them needs to be uh, trimmed, but I was pleased with the progress. So I hope the, um, the uh, tall grass can be trimmed and uh, the uh, city name will stand out in pride for all, for all to see. All right, thank you, Vice Chair Fisher. Uh, Commissioner Dunlap, anything? Um, no, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Director Gerber and your, your team and their hard work. Um, it's great to see um, you know progress throughout the city, so thank you. And um, Commissioner Liu, if you're tuning in, if you're live streaming, um, I've passed Commissioner Liu. Um, just wanna say publicly like how thank you to him for um, his um, service to our city um, brought a wealth of technical expertise and um, certainly missed on this commission, but um, I'm pretty sure that he'd answer the following if we all reached out for help. So thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you for, thank you for those words. And I, I 100% agree. Um, so a couple of things, um, Monterey, Milan, um, Ted, you're going to update on that, right? S so yes, I don't I yes. Oh, okay, yeah, thank you. Um, so I won't, I won't say I'll let you talk about um, what's been done and where we are. And, um, th and I echo Vice Chair Fisher and Commissioner Hughes's comments regarding the, the, the city sign and, and the visibility and uh, it's exciting to see it again and looking forward to it, seeing it with even more clarity <laughs> in the near future. Um, the last thing, and thank you, Liana, for, for distributing it to the group. I just wanted to alert everyone to something that might be of some interest. Um, and forgive me, I'm, I'm looking at my phone for the details. Uh, next, so a week from tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, February 23rd, the uh, San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments uh, is hosting uh, two online community workshops, one's at, uh, from noon to 1 p.m. And then the same day, they're offering one from five to six. Um, and I think the city scoop sent out an, uh, an alert about it today too, to those who, who subscribe. Um, but anyway, it's to provide an overview of short and long-term transit options designed to enhance communities throughout the Valley. Um, and from what I gather, and again, it's just from reading uh, what was uh, one of the going to one of the links um, is they're conducting a feasibility study to evaluate and improve mobility in the valley and they're looking at short and long-term transit options um, with a focus on transit dependent populations and equity focused communities constrained by existing transportation systems so apparently there's 635.5 million dollars in uh, funds uh, available starting fiscal year 2022 for improvements. Um, so I guess they're they're starting with these uh, workshops to, to talk a little bit about it and I guess get input and feedback from folks. So I think if you go to the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments, hopefully I'm getting the words right, uh, website, there's more information on that. But I thought that was, um, I thought that was interesting and exciting because there's Sounds like there's a lot of money out there to 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 do a lot of good, and uh, it's nice to see things um, moving forward, even if it if it's um, at their infancy. So that's all I had. So uh, unless there are any other commissioner communications, seeing none, we'll move on to our last item here, which is uh, seven staff liaison communications and status updates. Director Gerber. Sure. Um, so just to continue uh, your thought, Chair Abelson, uh, we, I, I believe we also posted uh, links to that mobility study on our city scoop website as well. The COG had distributed uh, meeting materials for all the cities involved to also repost that information. So if you're looking for that, it's, it's available there. Um, so I guess I'll start, uh, well, I guess I'll start with saying that um, though we didn't have any technical uh, action items on the agenda tonight. We continue to work 
uh, incrementally on all the projects listed here. And, and certainly when there's an action or discussion to be had by this commission, we'll identify on the agenda, but we, we continue to move these projects along. Um, we, you know, they're, they're moving along inch by inch and we hope to move them uh, stride by stride once we get a little more resources on the staff. We, we have two engineering positions that have been posted and hope to fill those in the next couple of weeks um, and uh, other positions within the department too, uh, operations wise so that our project teams can uh, focus more on, on these types of, uh, these types of concerns. Um, with regard to the, uh, to the clearing of the sign, we're very excited about that. That's also the first time I saw the sign and that's my road into the city every morning also. Um, we do have a second follow-up contract with our landscaping company to clear uh, the grass and that's our next step. Um, we actually had some community members volunteer to help us with that, but uh, fortunately or unfortunately we have to do that um, with our own team here because there's some safety precautions we have to take into place and in working on that hill, but we should have that cleared up uh, very soon. Um, so with that, uh, I'll jump into some of our, our project updates. Um, and if, if anyone has any questions, we can certainly talk a little more specifically, but I'll, I'll keep it high level for the most part. Um, for the rectangular rapid flashing beacons to be installed uh, at Mission Fairview, Mission Diamond, and Fremont and Linden, um, as I mentioned during our last uh, commission meeting, we, we had some contractual issues with that. We have that all sorted out now, and we're looking to have the council um, amend our design contract, uh, and that'll be on the council agenda on March 2nd, and that will uh, allow us to complete the construction documents. Um, we're utilizing Proposition C funds for that, and then we will start um, a federally funded installation project for those uh, flashing beacons. Um, the Slow Streets program, we, uh, as you know, we, we kind of ran out of money at that at the end of the year, but we very much want to complete that project. So uh, as Council Member Primeth had mentioned, we put together um, a wide variety of items seeking uh, mid-year budget adjustments throughout the Public Works Department. And in the transportation uh, section, uh, we're seeking funds to uh, bring that program back uh, and complete it with the existing team, uh, starting with uh, implementation of the res residential street project and then continuing on our design uh, progress on the mission project, uh, throwing in some more design um, components in that and also uh, working with uh, the traffic analysis component to evaluate the data, uh, the model and, and the data on the, on the traffic analysis. We do have some of the equipment that's already arrived. We'll be having, you know, the planters will be here in a few weeks. Uh, the parklet equipment will still take quite some time. It's coming from uh, somewhere in uh, Norwegian area, I believe. Um, so uh, there's quite a bit of work to do on that project, but we, we hope to start right back up uh, in the coming month here or so. Um, let me look back at my list here. Uh, we did have a, a nice productive conversation with a Holy Family Church about uh, the issues out there. Um, we floated some ideas around. It was very much a, a preliminary meeting as many of the, of the team had not met before. Um, it was Public Works, Holy Family Church, uh, Community Development, and actually the mayor joined us for that meeting as well. Um, so we'll return uh, back with Holy Family and try to hash out a, a solution that best balances everyone's interests. Um, with respect to that, we also open a dialogue with the high school because we do plan on implementing the changes along Fremont and trying to convert in front of the high school with a loading the loading zone. That same configuration exists in front of a Holy Family Church on Fremont. So we think um, per this commission's recommendation, we think that'll um, be a viable solution. We just wanna make sure that the high school's in step with us uh, you know, along the way as we try to implement that. Um, Cause there'll be, uh, it'll be those parents and children that are, uh, and students that are utilizing it. Um, we don't have much of an update on uh, the street improvement projects, uh, reconstruction and slurry. Uh, this is one area we're trying to get back up to speed on. We have a couple um, grant funding and budget issues to work out. 
Uh, and on the staff side, we have to restart our conversation with the contractor who had brought the design plans for the reconstruction to 60%. And so we have to evaluate what types of treatments will be utilized um, in that reconstruction. And, and so our staff, um, the staff that we have, we're gonna try to uh, restart that work uh, in short order here. Um, we did have a, a productive meeting with the city of Pasadena this past month. We, we, will, we started and we will continue to meet regularly with Pasadena to talk about um, our intercity issues. On the agenda this month was talking about our, um, uh, our um, fiber optic installation and the tie-in uh, at Pasadena. Uh, we talked about uh, reconfiguring um, the intersection at Pasadena, Columbia, and Fremont. And we got to a good place between the two cities on a green on, uh, in concept, how that should look so that we can retain parking in the city and also uh, bring more order uh, and perhaps another safety factor to that intersection. And we also talked about um, the relinquishment process and, and what that will look like with Pasadena. Um, in short, uh, we suggested what types of um, interim work could be done as uh, the relinquishment process moves forward. Um, I'll say that uh, given that the relinquishment is, is getting closer, but far from final, um, Pasadena is, is moving towards that goal with the California Transportation Commission and Caltrans to prepare for that relinquishment and see it through. Um, there likely won't be any major improvements until that relinquishment is complete. Um, as Pasadena, you know, it's unlikely that the city would be able to make some major capital improvements until they've got a secure future for that area. But um, in that same respect, Pasadena uh, is planning to utilize some of uh, some on-call contractors, consultants to um, begin their uh, evaluation of what the future, um, what future projects could be implemented so that when relinquishment is complete, they can hit the ground running um, in terms of the revisioning process and, and what things could look like there. So we will keep a, you know, a very open dialogue with Pasadena. We'll share information about our projects, what our plans are south of the border um, and what their plans are north of the border so that we can come to an understanding of, of how this will look. Uh, so very early on stage there, but we'll, we'll keep you posted along the way. Um, with that said, uh, our, our Fremont project, our active transportation um, MAT project, um, which as you recall is, is, a, is a $6 million grant, uh, Measure M grant, which is tied to a $10 million Measure R highway grant, uh, we, are, um, we are still considering how this money will be spent there's been some recent um, there's been some recent conversation at Metro as to how Measure R money can be spent. Um, in the past, it was restricted to vehicular improvements, um, vehicle throughput, and I believe that's how the ten million dollar component of that project was um, intended to. Uh, complement the $6 million active transportation project. But um, though the city was very fortunate to um, be granted these funds, um, normally in the grant process, we would have a very clear understanding of how those dollars would be spent. So we have a very high level understanding of where the dollars spent with regard to um, environmental documentation, design and construction. But in talking about how do we spend the money um, so that we can fulfill the grant requirements, and by that I mean uh, what Measure R requires versus what Measure M allows, and um, what types of improvements we can make along that corridor that would um, prioritize uh, pedestrian improvements, because that was the goal of that project, uh, we do need some assistance in that area. And so I had previously mentioned 
the city developing um, an RFP to that effect so we could conduct uh, what it would amount to a feasibility study uh, to evaluate how that money can be spent to achieve the goals um, of that project. And with that said, how do we uh, uh, incorporate uh, community feedback early on in that process versus um, later on in like a post-design uh, fashion because we want the community feedback to, um, to inform conceptually uh, what that project accomplishes versus um, community acceptance of the design. Well, both really, but um, uh, uh, I guess uh, what I'm saying is we want both of those things to happen and not uh, one versus the other. Um, so that, that work is underway. We still have to clarify with um, Metro um, how to spend that measure, our money, but that's not just us. That's a regional um, identified issue at the moment. And so we'll keep you posted as to how that, uh, how that works out. Um, with regard to the Rogan Fund project, the uh, North-South Corridor improvements, we had a long uh, meeting with the um, consultant on board. We already have a, a signed agreement for that project. And we were looking really specifically about um, what modifications to the scope were necessary um, in order for those projects to join into the other things we're doing. So I had previously mentioned, um, we, we, had, we had kind of considered these as almost five projects in the city right now that really should work together. Uh, the first one, which is underway, the Fair Oaks um, signal synchronization project. And so um, that Rogan Fund project uh, presumes what's already complete on the signal synchronization project in its scope. And that signal synchronization project is not yet complete. So it's important that the end point for the signal synchronization lines with the beginning point for the Rogan project. Um, and I can tell you, there are some issues to work out there um, with regard to um, how both of those will work. Um, we did have um, quite a few uh, achievements in the signal synchronization project recently. We thought that we may have to shut down the Huntington Fremont intersection in order to complete um, running that new signal line. But as of uh, today, really, or yesterday, we think that we were able to run the cable to the existing conduit um, using some consultant ingenu ingenuity um, without having to shut down that intersection. So we think that we can move forward um, on the rest of the corridor with that project uh, as it stands. Let me see what else I've got here on the list. Um, so uh, measure our projects in general, uh, however we want to refer to them, uh, 710 mobility, uh, TSM, TDM projects. Um, we did have a meeting with the, uh, a prospective consultant who had been doing some freelance work on the loop ramp project. And we asked that consultant for some guidance on um, a good way to move forward uh, uh, with not just the on-ramp, but the exit ramp. Um, and I'll share, to tie back into our Measure R discussion about what um, we can spend Measure R money on, typically Measure R funding, um, typically you can't spend Measure R funding on, on feasibility, on understanding um, the options for what is possible in a project. They usually start with uh, the environmental document phase. And so our thought is that perhaps we can start that project at the environmental document phase. It's an expensive phase um, and, and take some time, but it would, um, would put us ahead in the timeline of implementing a potential future project. An environmental document in itself evaluates alternatives uh, and therefore, so it may, it may be a good way, maybe a good path forward. So we're looking at that. Um, and that is certainly something that we will need some help with. Um, so again, with bringing some new staff on board and possibly some staff augmentation with um, transportation consultants, uh, that, that's our plan to move forward um, with that uh, on-ramp and, and exit ramp project. Um, 
the, the, we did mention, there was a mention of the neighborhood traffic management program. Um, again, the commission has already done its work in recommending that uh, program and the program document to council. So our next step uh, is bringing that to uh, council and also to implement that program. So we have asked in our mid-year budget for some funding uh, so we can start that. And what that would uh, ideally look like is uh, not necessarily, a, there would be an initial project to set it up, but an ongoing program to meet the needs of the city for them to uh, make recommendations about uh, traffic improvements that could be uh, funneled through this commission for review and then on to council for adoption, uh, budgeting, and then um, either moved into um, accomplished through our operating budget or moved into our capital improvement program. Uh, so we're hoping to bring that uh, to council very soon. Um, I should have started with this one, the Measure M project list uh, that we all recall from the end of last year. Uh, the next step for that is to go to council and that will be going to council on March 2nd as well for uh, approval um, because right after our council meeting, it will head to the um, Arroyo Verdugo uh, Technical Advisory Committee um, so that it can uh, be programmed for review uh, by the governing board uh, later this year. Uh, and then we'll be able to um, start utilizing those funds uh, for, the, for the prioritized measure um, M projects. Uh, with regard to the preferential parking program, um, that effort will actually be led by our community development department, our planning group. Um, and so we will uh, be uh, intimately involved with them during that process. Uh, and we will certainly um, pass along the comments from this commission and from that committee um, and see that they get incorporated into the, uh, the policy. That won't be starting just yet. It is part of the strategic plan. Um, it will likely begin uh, upon conclusion of the adoption of the general plan. Um, the same goes for uh, any updates to our mobility plan. Uh, once the general plan is concluded, we plan as a master planning document, we plan to bring the mobility plan, mobility plan uh, into our capital improvement program and budget it that way, just as many of our master planning documents have been done through as a capital improvement. Um, so in general, we have uh, different intersections we're uh, reviewing throughout the um, city. Uh, the one that was brought up um, was uh, the intersection that was discussed last uh, meeting at Monterey. We did take a walk out there and uh, Chair Abelson actually joined us and uh, Vice Chair Fisher gave us some feedback in, in reviewing the intersection also. Uh, we're gonna try to address some visibility improvements via, via operations uh, versus you know, uh, taking it to the level of a capital improvement. We think we can add some um, reflective devices to the existing stop signs. Um, one idea is to, uh, is to paint stop ahead signs on the street there um, at the same location as the existing uh, 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 the existing stop ahead signs, the posted signs there. Um, and even those, uh, I think they're like W31 signs uh, that are posted there. They're a, they're a diagonal sign with a rectangular um, labeling. And so we're, we're looking to see if the posts are tall enough to actually um, extend those into two diamond signs, which would, would grant higher visibility in that intersection. So we have some um, near-term things that we can do. And then once we um, verify that uh, those uh, sign extensions, those posts can accommodate sign extensions, and we can make that uh, change to relatively inexpensively modifications to improve that intersection. Um, there's a few other intersections in the city. I had mentioned the passing of Fremont. Um, that we have on our list here. Um, I won't go into too much detail. Um, other than the, the Metro Rail crossing, uh, we haven't done much work on that yet. There's some discussion to be had there, but we understand what the issues are. Uh, uh, we'll be working, uh, we'll be reaching out to Metro to discuss 
um, how we can implement those types of improvements. Um, certainly probably have some conversations with some of you first to make sure we, we fully understand the concerns from um, the neighborhood. Um, I, that's the majority of items. I, I probably missed a, a couple. So if, if anyone has any questions about ones that um, are sort of sticking in your mind, I'm more than open to, to trying to answer your questions. Ted, thank you. That was a fantastic report and a tremendous amount of work done in the last month. So um, I think on all of our behalves, I want to thank you so much. Um, it's great to see things moving forward um, on so many fronts, big and small in, in between. Um, I had a couple of quick questions, but I'll, I'll wait. Uh, does anybody else have any, any questions for, uh, for Director Gerber? Uh, let's see, how about uh, Commissioner Dunlap? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for that update, Director Gerber. Um, you mentioned the Measure M and Measure R, um, particularly around Fremont. Um, is, that, is that because the existing goals of those funding sources are different, um, or, or the Measure R um, allowable expenses are kind of being revised or changed? It's both. Um, so uh, initially, um, the measure R funds were I were to be directed to highway improvements, mm -hmm. which wouldn't capture pedestrian improvements. But with um, Metro's uh, restructuring that occurred in 2021, in which um, these multimodal projects are supposed to be emphasized we understood there to be some flexibility in how measure our money could be utilized. Um, but in reaching out and, and trying to find answer with that, uh, we also had heard from other organizations, Active SGG, SGV, for example, that said that there were um, some discussions within Metro as to whether that should apply to uh, measure our funds. So it's, it's sort of an open conversation at this point that we're tracking and certainly we have our opinions because we'd like to utilize those funds as flexibly as, as, as we can. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that works um, and it will determine how that money is, is spent on that project. But it doesn't prevent us from moving forward with our plans because um, regardless of whether Measure R funds um, can be used for these sort of um, uh, other types of mobility projects, we can't use them for early uh, planning stages. So it's a moot point whether we would use them or not. We can use a percentage of the Measure M funding, small percentage for early planning stages. So we, we still plan on moving forward um, with our next steps on that project under the Measure M funding. Great, thank you. And you mentioned the feasibility study on Fremont. Um, I guess my experience with those types of projects is it's good to get as much engineering feasibility in there too, um, to do like turning templates and to look at drainage. Um, sometimes those studies, um, they can be so high level and then you end up having to, once you try to construct it, you can't fit it in or, or whatever. Is that kind of what the feasibility study will look at? Um, or is it, is it more traffic or is it more um, the constructability? It's, it's more the constructability, it's more um, the spending priorities. And since we were sort of given these, um, I don't wanna call them like lump sum values, but this sort of spending limitation as to what can we prioritize under that. Um, and we'll certainly, um, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of improvements to maybe made when we start touching the street. Um, and it may, it may require us to seek other types of funding, like you had mentioned drainage in particular, um, which we you know there's multiple opportunities to um, find other types of funding when we start to touch stormwater improvements and things like that. So uh, we'll want to really take a look at what's a realistic goal for that project um, so that we can be sure to achieve the original objective of improving pedestrian access mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't get caught up um, in terms of some of these other ways that money can sort of be spent on, on any type of improvement project. I don't know if that sort of answers the question. Yeah, it, it, it does. I know um, a past presentations to this commission on that project, um, a lot of the items were very um, 
kind of transformative and on some of them maybe like pie in the, pie in the sky and then if you know at one point do we kind of really figure out what's constructible and like what's actually going to be implemented with this project yeah and that that's exactly what we're targeting um we've there's a lot of ideas about that area and I, we've seen those conceptual plans um some great um commonly used uh, active transportation elements, some probably not all that feasible for that particular corridor. And so we really wanna get down um, into, you know, get back to, I don't wanna say back to reality, but you know, the constructability of what's possible so that we can start down the right path. Thank you. And thank you for this update. I, I was taking um, copious notes as you were talking. Um, this is just so much great information, appreciate it. Thank you both. Uh, Commissioner Hughes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Ted, thank you very much for an excellent report. Um, very thorough. Uh, it's so exciting to see things moving. I had one quick question. Have you had much feedback on Meridian? Um, we have had a little. Uh, I, I didn't know much about the issues along Meridian, and I've, I've been sort of dirt, uh, working with Liana and Tatavec and sort of digging back into the history um, particularly what's been discussed at MTech uh, and chair and vice chair have been very helpful as well as the other commissioners um, have spoken with a resident or two along Meridian and plan to actually get out there and take a look at some of the issues out there. Um, we do have a sidewalk improvement project plan for Meridian um, where we're gonna be utilizing um, community development block grant funds, CDBG funds to um, improve um, um, uh, sidewalk access at specific intersections. I think there's 12 intersections planned as part of that project. Um, and then certainly we have um, a backlog of street improvement to do along Meridian. Um, some of the, the pavement condition index scores along Meridian are, are, are pretty low. Um, so I don't have much updates beyond that but hoping to uh, you know, re-engage that area and, and see what uh, is on the horizon as far as future projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anything else for Director Gerber? Um, all right, I, I have just a couple of very quick questions. Um, the current alfresco setup, for lack of a better word, on mission, is the plan that that's going to, the status quo will remain until the um, parklets and other aspects of slow streets are implemented, um, or is there something some something planned for the in between? Um, not that I know of. But I can double check with community development if there was any sort of um, alfresco changes. But our plan was to pick where pick up where we left off on the slow streets program. Um, we we basically took a look at mission, uh, the design. We had a little bit of feedback, so we have to go through another iteration. We hadn't yet had the opportunity to take all of the data and the analysis that Iteris had done and apply it to the design and also present that information um, for your review. Um, so there's still those steps to take until we can achieve um, a closer to final design uh, for changes to the street. Now I will say uh, we have a couple different thoughts on how to pepper in community involvement in that process, certainly through here, the, through the commission. Um, but given that there's different pockets of mission that will be affected, we really want to try to um, engage those groups locally um, throughout the process up and in, up and in to and including when we're actually building the parklets because sometimes you sort of once you start putting those temporary components together you, you see what what works and what doesn't work um, so that's our thought but of course step one is getting the budget getting the contract in place um, and getting and putting that team back to work so th that's the thought anyway Okay, great. And, and the budget, that's what you talked about is being discussed tomorrow night. Is that right? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the report 
on commissions? Is that something that's publicly available? Is that something that we or the community can access now or not just yet, if anyone knows? Um, so, so there's no report just yet. There will be a staff report. Um, of, of course, like any uh, council meeting, there will be a staff report that's drafted, I believe, and that should be posted any day um, for anyone's review. And then it's a, it's, it's a special meeting, so open public meeting for comment and participation. Um, and I'm sure um, the council members will be seeking uh, that public input as they make determination about um, actions, if any, to take on uh, commission structuring. So yes, I think it's a completely open um, process. I don't think any report has been posted to date. The only report I, I can maybe offer is the public works assessment report that commented on um, the public works commissions that is available. It's, it's, a, it's attached to the December 15th um, council agenda packet. Um, it, you know, I could send a, a link, but you have to kind of dig through that agenda packet, but that is on the website. Okay, great. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, and then last you mentioned, uh, I, adoption of the general plan uh, at some point down the line. Do you have a sense of the timeline for that? Um, I, I don't, I know that it's nearing conclusion. I know we have some urgently needed comments on the housing element that we have to finish uh, the public works department. So I think that might factor into it. I, I think it's very, I think it's nearing completion, but um, that's something I have to find out more about. Sometime this year, is that a? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, I. I I think it's supposed to be this fiscal year at, a, at least. Okay. And then um, last but not least, the all the different uh, sources of funding that we have, measures, MNR, et cetera, Fremont, ATP. Um, are we good in terms of any imminent, I'm sure you're on top of it, but I just wanted to make sure we were on top of deadlines um, so that we're not missing opportunities. Sure, um, it's a good question. Uh, as far as the ones that we have gone through, the ones we're talking about here, we're, we're okay on deadlines. Um, there's funding opportunities you know, out there. Um, there's ones that the city's participated in previously. There's ones that may have been utilized for an existing project or were intended for a proposed project there's still a bit of work for us to do to kind of climb through all that to see where we are. Um, that would be um, our, one of our, the management, the senior management analyst is helping us with that. And that actually is where um, public works needs a little help in adding staff. And that's a request we're gonna make um, very soon is to add that analyst staff to assist us with grant administration, um, meeting grant requirements, reporting, and then seeking new funding opportunities. So yeah, so, so the things that we have on our plate that we're talking about, we have a pretty good handle on. Um, it's sort of the things that we haven't touched just yet that we've got some work to do, if that helps. No, that, that's great. And I'm, I'm glad you're planning on getting some additional help. It sounds like it's sorely needed. So um, thank you for that. Um, well, that's all I had. Um, unless any of my fellow commissioners have any other questions for staff. Um, uh, Liana, do you have any anything to uh, update us on or share with us? No? Okay, well. Yeah, I'll, if, uh, Chair Abelson, if you don't mind, I have one more thing. Um, I'm sure you all know about this, but I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, this is, um, I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh, maybe not, let me see. I wanted to um, let everybody know that the 626 Golden Streets event will be returning to South Pasadena. Um, so this is, uh, if you recall, our, our slow streets work that we did last year was under the um, Open Streets um, Cycle 3 grant. This is where our Cycle 4 grant money is going, as well as our other neighbor cities. Um, and so this is going to take place Sunday, May 1st. It'll be a big weekend because April 30th is the uh, Eclectic Music Festival. Um, and so these events are, are somewhat tied together. But uh, South Pasadena will be supporting this event um, along Mission and Marengo. 
and then our neighboring cities will be uh, joining as well. So we hope to make this um, pretty memorable weekend. Uh, please you know, spread the word about this and um, it should be pretty fun. Well, that's exciting. It's glad to, it's uh, exciting to see it come back. That's great. Yay. Yeah. Is, is this uh, something that um, Active SGV is involved in? Yeah, very much. They're leading the charge on this. Okay. So we'll be having, um, we'll be uh, hosting pop-up tents, uh, active SGV pop-up tents during our various um, uh, events over the next couple of months through March and May that, the, that our Parks and Rec, our community services department holds. Um, so there should be a lot of information out there. We're gonna post some banners in the city to, to notify everybody about this. Um, and then later in the year, that same grant is going to fund uh, Arroyo Fest. But I don't know if I have a date on that one just yet. Terrific. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ted. Um, okay, well, with, with, with that exciting news, um, I think uh, we're ready to adjourn. So uh, have a pleasant evening, everyone. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.